day. We know how to draw graphs of motion for both constant velocity and acceleration, and how to use the graphs to work out different variables such as displacement or acceleration. In this lesson, we will learn how to use equations of motion. This is a mathematical approach rather than a graphical one. Although the method is different, we will calculate the same information. There are four equations of motion that we can use. Before we learn how to use them, let's see how they are related to graphs of motion. We know that we use the gradient to calculate acceleration from a velocity versus time graph. Therefore, the acceleration equals delta v, divided by the time interval delta t. We write this as a equals delta v over delta t. Delta v is the final velocity minus the initial velocity, so we substitute this into our equation. And a equals v final minus v initial divided by the change in time delta t. We rearrange this formula and make the final velocity the subject of the formula. To do this, multiply both sides by delta t so that a times delta t equals final velocity minus initial velocity. Now move the initial velocity across so that the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus a delta t. This is the first of four equations of motion. Now let's see how the second equation of motion was developed. We can calculate the displacement of an object by using the area under the velocity time graph. So here, the displacement equals the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle. The length of both the triangle and the rectangle is given by delta t. The height of the rectangle is given by v subscript i and the height of the triangle is v subscript f minus v subscript i. Therefore, the displacement equals the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle. The area of the triangle is a half base times height of the triangle, which is a half times delta t, multiplied by open bracket v subscript f minus v subscript i, close bracket. To get the displacement, we add the area of the rectangle. This is the base times the height of the rectangle, which is delta t times v subscript i. From our previous equation, we know that a delta t equals v subscript f minus v subscript i. So we can substitute this into the equation. Therefore, delta x, the displacement, now equals half times delta t times a delta t plus v subscript i times delta t. Now we multiply this out and we get delta x equals v subscript i times delta t plus a half a times delta t squared. This is the second equation of motion. We can use our next equation of motion when we don't have the variable time, since we will remove delta t from this equation. We will use our first two equations to derive this third equation of motion. We rearrange our first equation of motion to make delta t the subject of the formula. We get delta t equals the change in velocity, v subscript f minus v subscript i, all divided by the acceleration a. We substitute this into the second equation of motion. So we get delta x equals v subscript i times v subscript f minus v subscript i divided by a plus a half times a times v subscript f minus v subscript i divided by a all squared. You don't need to be able to do the algebra, but when we simplify it, it becomes v subscript f squared is equal to v subscript i squared plus 2a times delta x. We use the equation for the average velocity to develop the fourth equation of motion. The equation for average velocity is the sum of the final and initial velocity divided by 2. 
So the average velocity equals the initial velocity, v subscript i, plus the final velocity, v subscript f, divided by 2. We also know that the change in displacement, delta x, equals average velocity multiplied by the change in time, delta t. If we combine these, the change in displacement, delta x, equals the average velocity v subscript i plus v subscript f divided by 2 times the change in time, delta t. Here we have all four of our equations of motion. Let us use them to solve a problem. There are several steps used to solve an equation of motion problem. Always, no matter what type of question it is, make sure to read the question properly. A car accelerates from rest at 3 meters per second squared for 12 seconds. Calculate the distance the car traveled after 12 seconds. The first thing that we do is draw a picture of the problem, if they do not give you one, and fill in the positive direction of the motion. Here is a basic stick figure car, and since we haven't been told which way is positive, we choose forward, or in this case, to the right as positive. Now we list all the variables, vi, vf, a, delta t, and delta x. Read the problem again and highlight the information that we are given and fill it into the variables as we go. A car accelerates from rest. We can highlight that. We know that from rest means that the initial velocity was zero, so we fill that in. The car accelerates at three meters per second. Fill it in on our list. And the car traveled for 12 seconds. Fill it in. Now let's go back to the question and see what they want us to work out. We see that what they want is the distance, therefore we place a question mark next to the delta x. Our next step is to look at the equations of motion and decide which one to use. So here are our four equations of motion again. The first thing we do is identify which of these equations has the variable that we want. We want displacement, so highlight all the equations that contain delta x. What information do we have? We know that the initial velocity is zero. The acceleration is 3 meters per second squared, and the time traveled is 12 seconds. You will notice that we do not have the final velocity, so that means that we will not be able to use the equation if it includes final velocity. We see that our second and third equations here both use final velocity, so we will have to use the first equation. Now let's substitute our values in to calculate the displacement. Delta x equals 0 times 12 plus a half times 3 times 12 squared, which gives us a displacement of 216 meters. In this lesson, we have seen how the equations of motion are derived and what steps to follow in order to solve these types of problems. In order to really get to grips with this section, you need to practice as many examples as you can. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video. You'll find more information about equations of motion at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Until next time.